So um, getting ready to sell. Um, there's a number of things if you're a product based business that you want to have ready before you start selling, uh, whether it's wholesale or retail. Um, these are both uh, it's important regardless, really. So um, good, clear photos. Um, you can get away with doing this yourself, especially nowadays. Your your phone photos uh, really do a good job. Just make sure the lighting is great and, um, you know, you have a really clear, nice, crisp background. Um, but I've been outsourcing photography for years now, and I would really recommend doing that because you just get the best quality photos that you can and you can use them for everything then. And you don't have to worry about the main um maybe not as you don't have to worry about the stress of taking photos as well I hate setting up photography and and uh yeah just I spend in a day doing that when it's not my expertise is um it's definitely worthwhile to outsource that um as well as that you want clear consistent pricing and pricing is so important that it works for um you it works for the market at large and it also works for your target customer so you have to be comfortable with the price that um, that you're selling your products for. If you're selling too cheap or too expensive, that that will just not sit right with you and you'll know. Um, and it just feels uncomfortable and you don't want to be doing it. Um, and then within the market at large, you know, you know who your competitors are. You know who you want to be kind of seen alongside. Um, so if you're priced like way uh, different from them, then that will definitely um kind of be a big indicator of of something not being right and then you want to be right for your target customer so if your target customer is a student and you're selling things for way more than they can afford then um then that's not going to work either so you just need to be mindful of of all three of those things working together um and then you just want to make everything as easy to navigate as possible so um so if they're coming through your site as a retail customer, you just want them to get through the site as quickly and as easily as possible and find what they need to find. And if they're a wholesale customer, you want them to, um, to find everything that they need to find as well as easily as possible and um, that the process is, is smooth and they don't have any kind of conflicts along the way. Um, so... Specifically for getting ready to wholesale, um, it's kind of a bit more of a complicated process. So for retail, you can kind of just set up your website and, and get going um, or your Etsy or whatever else you're selling on. Um, whereas for wholesale, uh, there definitely is a lot more to it. But once you've got these things down, you know, it's it's just the same, really. Um, so when you're wholesaling, you'll want to have a catalog or a line sheet. Um, a catalog is like as you would expect, like a booklet that you would look through. A line sheet is um, like a PDF uh, version of that, really. So it would have like thumbnail images of your products and their pricing uh, underneath that and a product code number if you wanted to include that sort of thing as well. Um, you really want to have clear photography. It's really important to have um, photography that your uh, wholesale customers can use as well. So they want to... Be able to upload onto their website especially now this might not have been as important in the past but now all of my whole wholesale customers are selling online and they really want to have good images that they can easily upload um you want to have samples and you want to kind of price that into your business model as well that like you can afford to send out samples for free and you know just write that cost off um, so as well as that, you want to have your pricing right for wholesale pricing. Um, in the UK, there's usually a markup of 2.4. So you would like, so your wholesale price would be, say it's one pound, then you would times that by 2.4. So it would be 2.40 retail price then. Um, and in the UK, it's times two, but around, around two is really a good uh, markup. And that's what, that margin is what your wholesale customers need to need to like have their business function really and um, for them to make money as well in the process um as well as that you want to know your minimum order value um so at what point uh you know can you make this profitable there's no point the, the whole idea with wholesale is that you're selling a lot more of your products at a, a cheaper price um but you're like shifting that quantity really so at what point does it make sense for you? So my minimum order value is £100 uh, on cards because they're such a low value item. 
Um, but it's just about having enough that like it makes sense to ship that out. Um, and it's worth our time to pack that box of, of cheaper product, really. Um, and then minimum order quantities. Um, that's uh, so for each item, you'll have like a minimum order that you want to, to sell to wholesale. There's no point in a wholesale buyer buying one card of like each design. They'll, they'll just not know if it works for them. Um, so uh, I usually sell cards and sets of sixes so that's just the the quantity that you want to keep in mind so if you were selling uh say dresses it might be like you would order two or three because it's like such a, it's a higher value item um but it's just so that you, like you're happy to sell that quantity and they're they get enough of it into their shop that they know if it's working for them or not um, and then as well as that, you want to know your shipping costs. And um, in the wholesale industry, this is called uh, carriage paid. So that's a, a lot of wholesale customers expect there to be an amount where, um, you know, you're happy to cover the cost yourself as the, um, as the seller. So for orders under £150 for me, I, um, I ask the, the, the customer to pay for that. And orders over £150, we kind of, absorb that cost into into the um the sale so we'll we'll take on that cost and then you just want to know um you know everything to do with exporting so um so if you're shipping to america now the eu as well um if there's any tariffs involved um luckily with stationery there's not a whole lot but um but there there might be some complications if you're selling you know like fur or something like that or um something that that kind of uh, even food, all that sort of thing, it, it can be really complicated. Um, and then in terms of presentation, um, you want your products themselves to be ready, um, ready to sit in a shop on a shelf. Um, so you have to consider your packaging. Um, you know, you have to make sure that that product will will be handled and, um, and can like take the wear and tear of a shop and also um, that your packaging perfectly describes what the the customer is getting without them actually being able to take it home and fully look at it in a lot of cases um as well as that then you want to be thinking about your trade show setup so um you can kind of see an example there but you'll have like a booth um and then you kind of you just get like white walls and you just set it up um with all of your products uh so shelving um whatever displays you're using uh, catalogs to hand out to any passersby at a trade show all that comes into consideration when you're getting ready for an in-person show um, and then you as well you really want I think um, part of like you being kind of presentable or being ready for wholesale is just being confident in knowing your stuff um, knowing your pricing knowing enough about your product all of that sort of stuff it's really important um, so yeah, I just kind of thought I would add this in as well. If um, if you're new to wholesale or you're thinking about wholesale, um, I know it's kind of a, a tangent, but um, as a general rule, you want to take uh, your cost of materials and that includes your own time for making the product and double it. And that should get your wholesale price, but that's not always an exact rule. You can add in or take away if you need to, although definitely make sure you're covering your costs. Um, and then... So you would take then your wholesale price and double it or times it by 2.4 to reach your retail price. Um, and like in that equation as well, you should also be considering your uh, place in the market and what your competitors are selling their products for. 